live in a world of materials where strength, flexibility and durability are important. The main objective of this project is to develop new science and technology for the computer-based design of metals and alloys. The Japanese government and Cambridge University address these problems. The Japanese people now realize that uh, the basic science, sciences are more important to achieve uh, something in applied field. The Atom Arrangement Design and Control Project was established in 1990 by the Research and Development Corporation of Japan and Cambridge University to run for five years. I think there are two key overriding virtues. One is that for the first time we un we've put real science into understanding how you can design new metals and alloys. Before it was trial and error, now we've put real understanding in, we've developed computer programs and we can design alloys for specific purposes. That's a huge breakthrough. The second thing, which I think is equally important really, is we've developed a human network of scientists where true friendships are developed and these will last for many, many years. Oh, I see. And data, yeah. we, this, we can easily predict uh, the heat capacity. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are 96 metallic elements that occur in nature and a few more can be created. So imagine trying to mix them up in many different ways and also alter the concentration. There's an infinite number of alloys that can be designed. So it's not surprising that traditionally we've designed alloys by trial and error procedures because this is an incredibly complicated subject. And the way that we aim to do this is by modeling what should happen when we mix different elements together and process them by a variety of routes. And once you have a computer model, not only do you reduce the time between research, development, and conception of an idea, but you also have the possibility of radically new phenomena emerging from your mathematical representation of alloy design. I mean, uh, if we set some uh, experimental conditions, compositions, and they some kinds of property comes out, we format this process in computer and uh, we can calculate the properties from the given composition and the processes. And, but this is rather experimental, you know. This is a turbine blade from a gas turbine engine in a plane. And this is at the hottest point of the engine. Now, manufacturers around the world are putting enormous efforts into increase the temperature at which aircraft engine operates because if you increase the temperature, the fuel consumption is reduced, there are less harmful emissions, and the engine thrust is increased. Uh, if you can uh, improve the temperature capability of this sort of materials by, say, 30 degrees C, or a little bit more than that, probably you can save about 5% of fuel uh, used for jet engines or even power plants. That would be significant uh, if you think about the uh, uh, energy problem. Uh, one of the Japanese scientists working on this project, Dr. Harada, theoretically computed in a very sophisticated computer model a material for turbine blades which is the hottest material in the world, highest temperature in the world. And he is now collaborating with Rolls-Royce and they're jointly developing this new nickel-based superalloy for turbine blades. I'd like to explain a simulation of the atomic arrangement of nickel-based superalloys. Simulation method is the so-called Monte Carlo simulation. The principle of this method is to make the total energy minimum by direct exchange of the neighboring, neighboring atoms. This is the nickel-based superalloys and contains nickel and eight elements. Aluminium, titanium, chromium, cobalt, molybdenum, tantal, tungsten, and rhenium. And red color is aluminium and green is titanium. And initial structure was completely disordered 
and with time we can see the formation of the ordering phase. And with time the formation of the ordering phase is observed. For that purpose uh, we use atom probe by which we can actually uh, identify the atomic arrangement in the crystal and then we can compare the calculation with the experimental data on atomic scale. So uh, by that way we can uh, verify our calculation. This shows the composition of the ordered phase, so-called gamma prime phase. As you see, uh, experimental result and simulation result uh, very good agreement. If you look at the alloy design program that Dr. Harada and his colleagues have developed, both within this project and in their work at NRAM, it remains really the only program in existence for the systematic design of nickel-based superalloys. And that program is now being used by Rolls-Royce, which manufactures about 30% of all the arrow engines in the world. That is exciting. A well deposit is where you pour liquid metal in between two large chunks of metal and hope that it joins it up without causing any problems. Now, usually, the weld is made by putting several layers on top of each other. And every time you put one layer on top of another, it disrupts the structure of the underlying bead. And there's just nothing that anybody could do previously. Now, by playing about with a model of a well deposit on a computer, we came across a situation where we could make a multi-run well deposit. That means a well deposit created by putting several layers into a mechanically homogeneous uh, weld. Now, the advantage of that is that there are no weak bits left inside the microstructure. So we can exploit the high strength without any further processing. And that idea, which emerged purely from computer modeling and wasn't even conceived by trial and error experiments, is now, in fact, in production. Because the specimen is so far down, we're getting this. Mm, the modeling of such complex structures at the atomic level requires basic research. This is an atomic force microscope which is used to examine the surface relief and surface topography of samples. Um, at the moment we're using it to examine the change in crystal structure on the transformation of steel to bainite. This is a smooth, polished, untransformed sample with a line graph drawn on a clean area and the graph shows that there's no surface topography so just a flat smooth surface <clears throat> this is um, a transformed sample showing the bainite sheaths formed during transformation with a similar line graph drawn across the bainite sheath and this shows the peaks which is change in surface topography caused by the transformation to bainite. This basic research is important because it's used to confirm the results obtained through mathematical modeling. There are many spin-offs from this basic research, such as the computer software which was developed. The program that we've developed for weld microstructures is not actually restricted to welds. The phenomena are quite general. And it turned, turned out that there is a need for a new kind of a rail steel. So we put together the boxes from the weld program to design a rail steel. And in half an hour, we predicted chemical compositions, which, when the experiments were done in industry, turned out to have wear properties which are far better than normal rail steels, and which can take a knock in a much better way than conventional rail steel. So now there are about three tons of this material made for a test track. And all it took was half an hour of computing. We are already talking about uh, uh, the future collaboration after finishing this uh, uh, the project. And uh, as uh, we and RIM is collaborating with Rolls-Royce, and Rolls-Royce is collaborating with Cambridge, and Cambridge collaborating with us. 
I personally hope to continue the research on new subjects with Cambridge people. What it has meant is that there have been 30 people, 15 from Japan, 15 from Britain, who have worked together every day. You know, they've had coffee together, they've got drunk together, and so on. And they've done a great deal of science. And the science is a nucleus. It is going to grow in a big way.